Well, microinsurance is very simple. It's an insurance policy sold at a low premium to a poor person with a lower payout, but that payout matters hugely to them. So a woman might need to go to the hospital, but she has no safety net, no resources to fall back on. So she's forced to either bankrupt the family or spend all their savings um, uh, or not go to the hospital. And the consequences for her and for her family can be profound. Now, what insurance allows her to do is pay a small premium each month. It might be a dollar. It might be four dollars. It might be seven dollars. But fundamentally, that allows that poor woman, if an unexpected event happens, to be able to go to the hospital, to be able to get medication, to recover and not bankrupt the whole family or lose all their assets. The same is true of life insurance. People save and save for years, scrimping, people who earn very few dollars every day and slowly accumulate assets. And then one day, as happens to all of us, four years in or two years in, some terrible event happens. The breadwinner dies and, you, and they can immediately have all their debts that they have to repay. They can uh, have the funeral costs, which can often be significant in parts of Africa um, and, and necessary for continued participation in the community. And they lose all the assets, everything they've been working for, and a whole family business that supports, say, the three kids and all their kids can go down the drain. And these are real stories. I'm not making these up. And what insurance allows people to do is to recover from that shock. So the breadwinner dies, within two days there's a payout. People can pay for the funeral, people can pay off their loans, people can have some money to continue the business and get it to a point where they can run it six months later. So this insurance um, may seem like a, a small thing because it only costs a few dollars, but it provides people with the ability to recover from shock. And actually, globally, studies have shown Shown, um, particularly the work of Nobel laureate Amartya Sen has shown that the poor remain poor often because they have these adverse shocks. They do actually accumulate assets over time and then they fall back under the poverty line. So the, the importance of this cannot be underestimated. I think it is the one of the most central, if not the most central development interventions in the world and the exciting thing is it's profitable. Now just to take a, a, a step back, the, why is it profitable? Well, if you think in pure actuarial, hard-nosed business terms, insurance is about risk and it's about predicting what's going to happen. An insurance company takes money, tries to predict what's going to happen and promises to make a certain payout at a later, at a later date. And it takes some money for doing that and for sharing the risk pool, uh, for organizing the risk pool. Now, what makes something predictable? Well, it's large numbers. You would rather have a million people you're insuring at a lower cost than a thousand people you're insuring at, for a higher premium that they're going to pay. So the incredibly exciting thing about microinsurance is you can sell a huge numbers of policies at low margins to huge numbers of people and your risk pool becomes quite predictable. And that makes it much easier to manage. So even though you're taking a smaller cut on each policy, you're actually doing fundamentally, in some ways, a better business. Now, the important thing is you've really got to get your costs low. Because if you're selling a policy for $7, adding on 50 cents here or there is going to create real problems. So one of the really exciting things is the technology and the systems that allow you to do this. So microinsurance is now being sold through cell phones. Um, people are working through groups like churches where people where, you know, in South Africa, three million people come to the ZCC church every Sunday and they buy um, a, a lot of them buy microinsurance. And it's a very successful scheme, part owned by the largest insurer in Africa. Um, microfinance institutions, when people walk in for a loan, you add 2% and suddenly those people have coverage so that the loan is repaid, so that they are covered in the event of the death of a breadwinner, um, and so that they have a better, uh, a, a better outlook. Now, the, the last exciting thing here is it's not just about protection uh, in terms of social impact. It's hugely important because it's enabling. So think of a farmer. 
I myself have had bad experiences, failed development experiences, where I went to India and tried to get farmers to adopt certain um, uh, drip irrigation technology. And others have done this with seeds, trying to get the seeds that really help increase productivity. And farmers said no. And we couldn't work it out. We thought, look, this has a 95% chance of success. They're going to triple their income. Their family is going to climb out of poverty. Why are these farmers not doing it? And the answer is there's a 5% chance of failure. And 5% chance of failure of any new business for these people means that their children starve. So how many of us are going to undertake a new business when there's a 1 in 20 chance that our children starve? Now what microinsurance can do, for things like crop insurance for instance, is help people to take worthwhile risks. So people know that their assets of their family are protected, that their loans are repaid if they die, that they aren't going to leave their family destitute. They know that if the crop fails because of something entirely outside of their control, that they'll be able to get a payout. So they're able to engage in new forms of economic activity. They're able to take risks that allow them to dramatically, in some cases, increase their income. So it's not only protective microinsurance, it's enabling. And that is what I think makes it one of the world's most important development interventions.